Hi, I'm Steve Venner, uh, G0TAN. I provide technical and engineering support to Martin Lynch & Sons here in Chertsey. Today I want to talk to you about the new ICOM IC7100. I'm going to show you how easy it is to operate uh, using their new touch screen technology. ICOM's new radio, the 7100, um, it basically covers HF bands, uh, including 5 megs for those that have an NOV, so you don't have to have the radio modified in any way. Um, also covers 6 meters, 4 meters straight out of the box, uh, 2 meters and 70 sems. It also includes a D star, and the novel thing about this is the new touchscreen display, which I'll talk about later on. So, uh, other than that, it does 100 watts on all HF bands, including 6 meters, 50 watts on 4 meters and 2 meters, and 35 watts on 70 cents. So, what's in the box, I hear you ask? First of all, you have the user manual, some software on CD ROM, you also have the main base unit. Uh, here which incorporates a front SD slot uh, with, for use with an SD card which I'll explain later. The microphone, various interconnect cables, power cables and the like and the important part is the, the head unit or control unit here. So what you have on the front of the unit is a lot of frequently used controls such as the volume control, the RF gain, squelch, VFO knob, uh, memory channel uh, controls and other functions along the bottom here. But most importantly is the new touchscreen display which allows a lot more functionality to be uh, easily accessible. On the back of the head unit you have the built-in speaker which provides superb audio quality, the interconnect socket to connect the cable to the main unit, microphone socket, Morse key and external speaker. You also have these extendable feet to give you a little bit more support on the, of the head unit should you need it. Okay, all right, so first thing we're going to do is power the unit on. Let's wait a few seconds for it to boot up. And there we have uh, a signal. So first, first off, the control up top is the volume control. Uh, volume is coming out of the little internal speaker on the back of the head unit. Uh, Surprisingly good audio quality for such a small speaker. Um, the back knob, the back control, is the RF gain and uh, squelch control. So we leave it about mid, set to midday. The control below that is a multi-function uh, control and its normal operation is to change memory channels um, or memory banks should you want to. Along the bottom we have the RIT, Receiver incre Incremental Tuning. If you press that, the RIT light comes on and you can use the inner knob to uh, change the tuning. And if you want to just to reset it, you can just press and hold the button and it takes you right back. Okay, that's the RIT. Next button is Tuner Stroke Call. Uh, if you have a, a tuner attached to the main unit, pressing that button will actually start the auto-tune process. You have a menu button along the front here, which I'll describe later on. The next button below that is the microphone gain and RF power. Right, the mic gain is the top control. Okay, we set that to about 50%. The outer one allows you to change the RF power. And that's normally at the moment set to 100%, i.e. 100 watts. Okay, and we just press the button again. Uh, next one along is the noise blanker. Um, if you have noise blanker, pulse noise, that reduces it um, sig significantly. And you can pressing and holding a key will allow you to change the, the level depending on how much you want. And then if you get a bit um, confused, you can just press the default and it will reset it back. So that's the noise blanker. Uh, the speed and pitch uh, control, again if you do that, if you're in CW mode, then the inner knob does the control, the, the speed, the outer one does the actual pitch, but we're not in CW so that doesn't uh, have anything to do at the moment. Next one up here is the noise reduction. Noise reduction, if it's on, it's on at the moment, if I turn that off, you can see the, the actual background noise raises, uh, rises significantly. And again, you can, by pressing and holding it, you can change the level how you want it. So you can turn it way up and if you turn it on it goes right down and then if you press and hold you can see how much it changes 
So we set the default level as there. We'll turn the noise reduction off. Uh, you've got a preamp button here, which has two preamps. Preamp one, preamp two, preamp off. If you press and hold it, you actually get the uh, attenuator selected. So we usually run it with preamp one engaged. The next button along at the top is the notch filter. So if you have a, a, an annoying tone that you want to get rid of, you can press the notch. This comes up with AN, which is the automatic notch fil filter, and that immediately takes out any unwanted um, tones. If you press it again, you can get manual notch, and if you press and hold it, you can change manually to, to notch out the, the tone that you don't want. Okay. Um, the DR button is the digital mode. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the D star part of that later on. The other two buttons here, we have the set menu, which sets a whole bunch of stuff. Again, I'm going to go through that in a little bit more detail later on. And then we have a quick set menu. Uh, again, I will talk about those separately and show you what features are available. The auto tune button is uh, something that uh, if you have a, an auto tuner, you can set it up to every time you key up, um, the, the auto tuner will tune if you want it to. You don't have to press the tune button. If you're running split, the XF XFC button will show you the transmit uh, your transmitted frequency rather than the receive frequency. Uh, the speech button, if I press that, so you can just about hear that maybe. That's for uh, partially sighted people. That helps them navigate the uh, the radio. Um, we can turn that off. Oh, don't turn it off. We just keep it going. That's fine. That's okay. And the button, very good. That's the memo pad. If you want to store any memos, you want to go go through them quickly. But we don't. We haven't got anything stored at the moment. On the top here, you have the main VFO dial, as you can see, um, and that's adjustable. You can either have it in free free mode. You can have it so that it clicks, or you can have some form of resistance to save you spinning. But we normally leave it in that mode so it's easy to tune. So that's the main controls on the front of the control unit. So next we come on to the main touchscreen display. Um, let's say for such a small unit uh, one of the complaints or sorry, some of the comments that we hear about small radios is the difficulty in navigating the menu systems and trying to remember where things are. Well ICOM have got around this by actually uh, using this touchscreen technology to allow you to access features of the, the, the radio which you wouldn't be able to normally uh, access because of the physical size. So the simple way of doing this is, so I've already told you how to, or shown you how to use the VFO, which is fine, but if you want to go to a different band, you say, well, where's the band button? Well, that's basically what you have to do is touch the megahertz part and you will get your uh, band selection up. So if we want to go to say to 28 megs, something like that, we just touch 28 megs and there we go. So we go back to any band we want, 18 megahertz, great. Uh, one thing that you will probably have noticed on there, there's no band button for the uh, 70 megs part of the band. So the way to get around that is by going frequency input or F input, okay, and you can type in the frequency directly. So 70.1, should we say, and enter, and there we go. So that's how you eat so easily to change frequency. Now, normally, um, you can use the VFO knob to, uh, to ch change uh, frequency, but if it's a bit too slow, rather than the tuning step button, which you normally have on icon radios, you just hit the middle part of the band and you'll see a little icon appear over that and suddenly the, the tuning speeds up significantly. And if that's too fast for you, you just take that off. If you want to go down to one hertz tuning, you can press and hold that and you see the last digit come up here. So that's that. Press and hold. Okay, good. So we're back, that's how it is normal. So that's the frequency input. Um, the next thing we're going to say, well, you want to change modes. How do we change modes? So again, you have USB up on the top left hand side of the display. You just press the USB and now you have your SSB, CW, RITI, AM, FM, wideband FM, data and digital voice. So we just sort of say whatever you want to go to, CW, it changes to CW. Um, so let's go back to sideband. Uh, 
there we go, right, yes, sideband. I'm going to go back to 14 megs, because that's uh, some noise and stuff on there. Now, as far as filtering is concerned, what you have here is the filter button. Okay, so you can see what filter you've selected. It goes through the normal filter one, filter two, filter three. So filter one, filter two, filter three. You see it gradually gets narrower and narrower. But what you can do if you press and hold that, you can actually see the filter that's selected. And you can actually change these um, settings on here if you want. You can change it from soft filtering to sharp filtering. You can change the bandwidth if you want to. To very 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 narrow bandwidth it tells you the frequency on CW you can go right down to 50 Hertz in bandwidth but we're not going to do that now so I'll just press that and that's the default so that's for default for fil filter 3 so there you go so we're going to go back to filter 1 okay so that's that's that so that was the the main uh, most commonly commonly used uh, functions of the touchscreen display but um, to make things a little bit more easy to use, we also have a menu system here which is accessed via the menu button uh, on the keypad here. So when you get that, this cycles through three phases of the main menu. So we've got M1, which has scan, split, A, B, VFOs, VFO or uh, mem memory or memory write. Menu 2 has uh, duplex, AGC, voice, uh, compression, transmit bandwidth. And menu 3 is also the memo uh, to do it storing on the memo pad, the, the band scope and the SWR checker which you can check out your antenna, see how good it is. Um, I'm going to go through a few of these features now, not, not too many because we don't have too much time. Um, well, let's go to men menu one. So if we want to do, say you want to do split frequency, hit the split button. We're currently at 14.1 um, uh, meg on our transmit. So this is where the uh, XFC button happens and you can see that we've got a 93.91 kilohertz. Now if you want to change that from the main VFO you can change that the other way. You can get right down to probably a, let's try 10, 10 hertz. It's usually plus 10, 10 kilohertz. So we go up there. That's a 10 kilohertz shift. Hold that. So now we know we're, we're 10 kilohertz from the, when we key up, if we key up now, we transmit on that frequency. So, so that's the uh, split, let me take that off. Okay, let's try uh, the next menu, which is what here. So if we have uh, the AGC, we can set it from slow, fast, or medium. And you can change by pressing, holding those, you can change the delay to suit yourself. Okay, so go back to the menu. Uh, again with the compression, you can turn that on and turn the compression level up. Uh, so it's so easy to use. Uh, transmit bandwidth you do in a similar way. So me menu three, um, memo I've already said about sort of storing uh, memory uh, features. The scope button will give you a band scope. If you press it, just press and hold it, it scans once. If, however, you press and hold it, it continues to scan. Now we have a signal coming up there, so we can stop that. Now we can tune our VFO to somewhere around about there. That doesn't appear to be anyone. Maybe, oh, someone's tuning up. Okay, all right. So that's how the, the scan mode works, uh, or scope mode, I should say. Now the other thing that I quite like on this radio, and it's similar to the one on the IC7000, is the SWR meter. So if you know you want to sort of check out how good your antenna is, what you can do is we can set the number of grab baths, this one, and we can say let's go up to 13 steps. Okay, so we've got lots of little 13 steps around here. Now what we can do is if we press the play button, if you like, now when you key up the microphone, you can see what the SWR is like all the way across your band. All the way across. So we know that we've got uh, a pretty good SWR all the way across the area that we're interested in. So that's one. And if obviously if you uh, have a bad SWR, you can do something about it. You know, ATU or uh, fix the antenna. Okay, and the last um, option there is the Vox. So you can switch the Vox on. 
maybe, if you're lucky. One, two, three, four, and there we go. So the next um, operation is to use the set menu. Um, this provides you access to a lot of less frequently used uh, functions. So if we just press the set button, and what, we've, what happens now, i just turn the volume down a little bit, we can set, we've got four pages on here, so what we do is go up to page one, so you've got the voice memo, uh, that will store um, a voice uh, recording if you want to on your SD, SD card, uh, you've got call sign, um, that's for used in D-Star, we just go back there. Receive history is another a D star feature, which I'll talk about briefly later. Uh, your DV memory, uh, what else we got? My station, so you can set up your station uh, messages so that when the radio wakes up, you can see it displayed. Um, digital voice set, uh, GPS. Um, the GPS feature um, is utilized using a third party application. Um, we haven't used that yet, so that's fairly new to us. Um, what else we've got? Speech. Um, so this tells you that when you press the speech button here what happens, what you can do. Mode speech. We basically sort of have everything on except for the mode switch, uh, speech. Um, then what else have we got? Um, QSO RX log function button. This is quite useful because this gives you access to, you've got seven pages in here. Yes they are a little bit uh, convoluted but once you get used to them it's quite easy to do, quite easy to find your way around. So you can go down all the various different uh, PTT locks, the whether what tuner you have, um, all sorts of different things, the notch switches, as you can see there. So, okay. So there you go. Right, so that goes back. And you've got tone control. This is the RX tone, SSB. There's all sorts of different things that you can set up. As I said earlier, this is the sort of features that you very rarely use. Um, even down to the connectors. So you can tell you whether you want to use USB on the audio out. So if you're doing any data modes, things like that, digital modes. Um, and we go down a little bit more. Um, you can set up the display how you like it. You can have, uh, let's say, contrast. We can get it quite contrasty or very weak, depending on your light levels, your surrounding. Uh, same with key backlights, LCD backlight and other such things. What else we've got on here? Back and white pop-ups. There's all sorts of things that you can do on here, but it's uh, f amazing features. Okay, so, right, so we go back, and here is where you set the SD card. You can save all your parameters, you can save your RITI messages, you can save your voice calling messages, all by um, storing them on the SD card. You've got, basically, if you're recording, you've got 35 hours of recording, should you need it. Okay, and if you want to format the SD card, um, no, we don't want to do that, because it's got some stuff on there we don't want to get rid of. Okay, and then here, and then you unmount it if you want to ever, ever remove it. Okay, so the others here gives you the information about the radio, the version, software CPU version, DSP version. Go back. Uh, you can clone two radios. Should be you be rich enough to have two of these? Uh, actually, they're very cheap, um, so there's no reason why you shouldn't have two. Uh, you can do touchscreen calibration, and then you can do a reset. Uh, this is what they recommend when you first uh, receive the unit: do a partial reset. I'm not going to do that because it's going to wipe out some of the D-Star stuff that I've already saved from earlier. So that's the set menu. There is another menu here called the Quick Set. If I press that, now here you can do such things as meter type, so you can have the meter set to power output, SWR, so it changes to SWR, so when you key up, we've already done an SWR check earlier, so um, we know that's okay. Uh, so again, we do quick set, um, the priority watch is on, if you have priority watch, uh, GPS position, and GPS information. At the moment, we don't, as I said earlier, we don't have any GPS um, capability on this at the moment because it's handled by a third party. So we haven't delved into that just yet. Maybe for a future release of this uh, production. Um, I mentioned earlier on one of the uh, features about this radio is D-Star. Um, D-Star has been set up on the 7100 to be as easy to use as possible. Um, so with that in mind, uh, 
uh, depending on your location, there is a database effectively pre-programmed into the radio, allows you to select all of the current D-Star uh, repeaters and select your local one. And that's again a function of the GPS, uh, should it be enabled um, on your system. So what we're going to do first is change bands to two meters. So hit the top button, 144, there we go. Right, so we change bands and then we just hit the DR button at the bottom. And at the moment you can see there that our local D-Star repeater is set to Tring in Hertfordshire. Now, when you get this first off, you can set up whichever one you want. You will have a, a menu option here, repeater list. If you actually hit that, you can say which country do you want to uh, go to. Let me say United Kingdom, which is us. And then you can scroll up and down to whichever one you want until we get. We're gonna stick with Tring as that's fairly, fairly local to us. Okay, and then what we're going to do here, so all this data now has all been, been pre-programmed. You don't actually have to do anything as such, just enter your call sign. So we can do CQ, if I press and hold that, um, actually I don't want to do that one, I want to do, oh, let's try again, there we go, right, that's it. So we're going to do a local CQ, and what I'm going to do here is do echo test. Okay, so it should come up there. So we're doing echo test to Tring in hearts. Now if I speak into this, I'm going to turn the volume up a little bit. We say uh, G0 TAN testing. A G0 TAN testing. There we go. So Echo Link is now as easy as that. So much, much, much easier. So there you go. So that's the, the basic features of the 7100. Um, it is so easy to use. Um, obviously there's going to be a little learning learning curve but uh, the learning curve uh, is actually quite short compared with some of the other radios so uh, i hope you enjoy it there you go and thank you for watching great All right, Richard. thank you very much steve well it was my pleasure fantastic yeah, well absolutely thank, thank you for the demonstration of the 7100 it's i tell you what it's been a pleasure to you since we've had Excellent. it here um, i'm very impressed with it yeah. so um, well i think we're all we're all taken by the 7100 yep. um icon would definitely hit on a winner and um, I think that's been proven by the sales so far. Yes, absolutely. Um, we've got very limited stocks left, so uh, if anyone would like to place an order, please uh, contact either myself, Richard, uh, sales manager here at Martin Lynch & Sons, uh, or any of my sales guys uh, directly at the store. Um, as I say, we've got very limited numbers left. Um, there will be a new delivery coming uh, into September, yeah. but uh, as I say, we do have uh, limited stocks left at the moment. Uh, part exchanges obviously uh, considered and uh, finance options available so uh, please do give us a call here at the store so Thank thanks you. again Steve Thank you. Um, cheers fantastic it's a pleasure. and uh, a great radio yeah joy to use I think yep. lovely great. thank you very much Thank you.